perspective, visit EWTNnews.com. Women of Grace with Johnette Williams starts now. This is Women of Grace Live, discussing issues important to your life and faith. Spiritual insight, practical wisdom. Join us as we transform the world one woman at a time. Women of Grace, for such a time as this. Now, here's your host, Johnette Williams. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Women of Grace Live. I am Johnette Williams, and I am thoroughly delighted and happy to be with you today. This is the day the Lord has made. What do we do? Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, it's such a beautiful thought to think about that our God had this moment in time in his omniscient gaze from all eternity, and he knew we would be together today, brought together by airwaves. He knew that we would join our hearts and our minds together as we spend this hour discussing issues of importance to our life and our faith. And for that reason, we have full confidence that God is with us. Yes, he is indeed. So we invite you to give us a call here so that we can talk with you about questions of faith or issues that you're facing or pray with you, whatever it is that the Holy Spirit puts on your heart. Let me give you that toll-free number. It's 833-288-EWTN, toll-free for you right here in North America. That's 833-288-3988. Eight six Also available for you out there uh, in social media land. And all you need to do is to get to EWTN Radio's YouTube channel and Facebook page and use the chat feature there. And you can put your question or comment, insight, inspiration, or word of encouragement up in that chat feature box. And Jeff Burson, our producer and social media manager, will dash on out there, retrieve it, put it up on the board, and we'll be able to talk all about it. We certainly will. We've got Matt Kabensky on those phones. When you call in today, be sure to give him a big old how hey and do let him know if you're a first time caller and we'll ring our first time caller bell to i uh, welcome you for your debut right here on women of grace live you also can let jeff know that in the chat feature if you prefer to use ewtn radio's youtube channel or facebook page and we'll ring the bell for you if you're a first time submitter just very eager to hear from you today about all of the good things that are going on oh my goodness we've got a lot of trouble we know that. But here's the good news. God is with us, you know, and this is what I remind myself of. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, my goodness, I can't. You know, what am I going to do? And and just about the time that I'm getting myself all wound up in knots over all kinds of different things, I gotta take a deep breath, stand back and say, you know what? This is the day the Lord has made. And when he made this day, he made it perfectly and it's filled with all kinds of grace and heavenly beatitude and blessings. And all I need to do is to stand back, acknowledge that truth, and then cooperate with the grace that God is offering me for this moment. And, you know, I find in my own personal life, in my life, this is really, you know, I don't want to say a mood elevator, but it relieves us of stress. It really does. Uh, We have to do our part, of course, you know, and we have to do our part in the world of man. We have to do our part in our time of prayer. We have to do our part in the reception of the sacraments of the church. We have to do our part in our relationships. But, you know, our part is cooperating with the grace that is already there for us to use. And uh, so, you know, this is why, you know, I have this um, exhilaration in my heart because I know that that God is all powerful. I know that God never permits anything out of which he's not going to work a great good. I know that God many times in allowing a situation or a cross to come is really averting a greater cross in our lives. That cross is going to dis, you know, displace an even greater cross that would come if that cross wasn't there. And I know that, you know, with, with the, the, the holy beatitude and intercession of our blessed mother, we have nothing to worry about. We have her protection and her protection is the protection of God himself. And when we call upon that mantle of our blessed lady to encompass us, there's a scripture passage just came into my mind now. I'm going to have to look it up and see where it is. Ah, gee, whiskers. Maybe one of you, if you, uh, you know, have the moment to do it, you can look it up, um, do a little search. But it's a passage that is very obscure. And even when you look like in a concordance, you know, or you try to find some kind of exegesis on it, there's not much given. But it talks about that there's a new thing that's going to come. And what is it going to be? It's going to be that the woman encompasses the man. The woman encompasses the man. I've pondered that particular passage many different times. uh, But it comes to my mind right now that, you know, this is what 
the father does in a certain way with that mantle of protection of our blessed lady. You know, our lady wraps her mantle around us, right? She's encompassing us in that mantle of protection. That mantle of protection is a shield of grace, right? Uh, it's a shield of faith. It's, it's, it, 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 it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a holy encasement, you know? And, and where, where is that mantle of our ladies, you know? I mean, where is it? Is it around her shoulders? Mm, I think it's more her heart. I think that her heart is this encompassing of the man. She encompasses us in her most immaculate heart and carries us there, you know, to the splendors of the Father. So anyway, all that being said, this is a good day. This is a good day. Let's cooperate with the grace that God's provided us for this day. 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. Oh, looky here, looky here. My producer did it for us. Thank you so very much, Jeff. It's Jeremiah 31, 22. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall encompass a man. Jeremiah 31, 22. For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall encompass a man. We would do well to pray about that, you know? And I mean, I, I think that we could substitute that article, not to change scripture. You don't. But in my mind, that a woman is the woman, right? The woman shall encompass a man. But, you know, uh, there's a great truth that is in that. And we've just talked a little bit about it. And it's right to talk about it. This is May. It's Mary's month. Tomorrow is the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. It's a very special day for oh so very many reasons. Um, One of the big reasons is because it's my daughter's birthday tomorrow. So I'm wishing her a happy birthday, Jessica, a day early. I'll wish her again tomorrow. Uh, But, you know, Uh, This reality of our Blessed Lady, doesn't she demonstrate beautifully her most immaculate heart there in Fatima? And what does she tell us about it? She says, in the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. Well, now there is something else to meditate upon. There is something else to ponder. There is something else to take into our prayer time. And I've got this beautiful little manual here. You can order it through TAN Publications. I bet you they've got it at EWTNRC.com, though I haven't checked that out. And these are some of the statements that <clears throat> are made in the documents of Second Vatican Council, specifically Lumen Gentium, about our Blessed Lady. And, and here, you know, when we talk about this encompassing in our Lady's heart, this is her maternal beatitude. You hear me use that phrase a lot, right? It's the maternal blessings. It's, it's the maternal holiness of our Lady. And that maternity, of course, uh, to her son, our Lord Jesus Christ, but by extension to each one of us. Remember what it says. I read it to you the other day in Revelation uh, chapter. Chapter 12, the last verse, I don't know if it's 33 or 31. I'm not really sure what that last verse is, or maybe it's 19. Anyway, go out there and read it. And, and, and it talks with you about how it is that the evil one, not being able to get to the woman and her child, has, makes a war against all of the other offspring of the woman, the brethren now uh, uh, of Christ. Now, this is not biological brothers. Mary is perpetual virgin. So she never conceived another child in her womb, but she's conceived millions of children in her heart. So she is our spiritual mother, right? And this is what it says here. Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium, the maternal duty of Mary toward men in no way obscures or diminishes this unique mediation of Christ, but rather shows his power for all the salvific influence of the Blessed Virgin on men originates not from some inner necessity, but from the divine pleasure. It flows forth from the superabundance of the merits of Christ, rests on his mediation, depends entirely on it and draws all its power from it in no way does it impede but rather does it foster the immediate union of the faithful with christ yay thank you lord 833-288-EWTN that's 833-288-3986 give us a call we're here for you today Vivi la verità, vivi cattolico. Ma buhai sa katotohanan. Isa buhai am pagiging katoliko. Vive selon la verité, vive en catholique. In any language, it means the same. Live truth, live Catholic. EWTN. Here's today's quote from Mother Angelica's perpetual calendar Christianity is a way of life, a way of thought, a way of action that is contrary to the way of the world. Mother Angelica's perpetual calendar with her reflections is available for you right now at EWTNRC.com. That's EWTNRC.com. Or call 1-800-854-6316. 
This is Johnette Williams. If you missed part of today's show, catch the Encore tomorrow morning at 3 Eastern. Check out the podcast anytime at EWTNRadio.net and click Podcasts. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. For 25 years, the National March for Life has been the nation's premier pro-life event. I am choosing life for my baby. Uniting hundreds of thousands of Canadians in Ottawa and around the nation who stand for life while challenging our legislators to enact legal protection for Canada's most vulnerable. I am deserving of assisted living, not assisted death. On May 12th, Canadians will gather peacefully on Parliament Hill for a rally and march through the streets of Ottawa in defense of life at all stages. I am deserving of care until my natural end. The National March for Life. I am. I am. I am. Because existence is always enough. Today at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on EWTN Radio Essentials. The Women of Grace phone lines are open. 1-833-288-EWTN. 1-833-288-3986. Well, welcome back, everybody. We are so happy to be with you today on this beautiful Thursday in the Lord. And we invite you to give us a call here. 833-288-EWTN. That's the toll-free number for you if you're in North America. That's 833-288-EWTN. 3986. Pick up the phone. Give us a call. Matt Gabensky will answer your uh, phone call and he will get you up on the board here. If you're a first time submitter, as I like to tell you, let us know. If you're a first time caller, let us know. We'll ring this bell for you. So the question is, how do you submit your question? Well, you go out to EWTN Radio's YouTube channel and Facebook page. Jeff Burson, our producer and social media manager, will get that question. He'll put it up on the board. We'll discuss it. Well, yesterday, Sue Brinkman was with us, and oh, golly gee, did we not have a lot of phone calls. So if you tried to call in yesterday and you couldn't get in, give us a call today. We'll probably be able in some way to be of assistance to you on whatever question or comment you might like to make. So we're talking about Our Lady. We're talking about her heart. There's a reason for that, that I am so, uh, what, what I want to say, transfixed by this topic right now. And and the reason is, is because very soon, and uh, very soon, May 20th and 21st, we're going to be at Our Lady of Divine Providence House of Prayer in Clearwater, Florida, for a beautiful two-day two days retreat and it is two days with mary a journey into our mother's heart so now you can see why i'm so excited about the immaculate heart of our lady right we're going to be journeying into that heart well what does that mean exactly well I'm going to tell you just a wee bit, and that is St. Louis de Montfort tells us that Mary's heart is a place, right? And then Father uh, Frederick Faber, who translated uh, a, a lot of uh, the works, he translated, as a matter of fact, True Devotion, he tells us that Mary's heart, Mary's uh, Mary's heart is a world, that there's a world to explore in Mary's heart. And so when we pray the rosary, one of the things that I like to do when I pray the rosary is before I, I you know, I'm, I'm recollecting myself, I'm coming into the presence of the Lord, um, opening myself up to be receptive, I'm trying to lay hold of all of these wandering thoughts that are going on. And I try to remember that I'm in the present moment and God inhabits the present moment. So he's right there with me. And as I bring myself into that time of recollection, then and I'm about to pray those those sacred mysteries of the life of our Lord uh, by plying those holy beads, I like to um, ask our Blessed Mother to take me by the hand and walk me into her immaculate heart wherein dwells the mysteries of her son's life. And, you know, it's okay to pray like that. It's a good thing to pray like that. In his apostolic letter on the rosary, uh, St. John Paul II tells us, you know, that we want to contemplate the mysteries through the gaze of Mary. We want to look at the life of our Lord through Mary's gaze. And she wants to show us through her own insight, through her own sight sometimes, you know, what those mysteries were like, what was going on there. And we know that all of the graces, all of the treasures, of grace, they're 
held in that eternal moment. Uh, and, and the repository of them, I believe, is this Immaculate Heart of Our Lady. So it's a beautiful thing. So uh, for this lovely Benedictine Enrichment se Seminar that's going to be taking place at the House of Prayer there in Clearwater, Florida, Two Days with Mary, A Journey into Our Mother's Heart, we're going to be exploring that. We're going to be exploring it together. We're going to be seeing what some of the great saints have had to say about it. We're going to be listening to sacred music uh, presented to us by Kitty Cleveland, who is going to come and be our vocalist. This is a, a new addition to our weekend. It just happened this week. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, Lord, you know, you are just pulling out all the stops. You're just regaling us. You know, you're just regaling us. So we're going to be looking at sacred heart, uh, art. We're going to be listening to uh, Kitty sing for us and 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 through uh, the beautiful vocals that God's entrusted to her to take us more deeply into these mysteries uh, we're going to be uh, finding out uh, both you know in an intellectual way using our our minds uh, con but also and more importantly just opening our hearts so I'm so excited the grounds are perfect for this kind of a retreat uh, we uh, are going to have Father Edmund Sylvia with us he's going to be presenting along with me I'm so eager for that I just know it's going to be such a beautiful time in the Lord uh, so many lovely things are, are going to be happening all of the information is available for you at EWT excuse me at women of grace Dot com. That's womenofgrace.com. Get out to our website. The info is there. Uh, you know, you can read all about it. Uh, you can register right there, and we certainly do hope that you will. Uh, it is filling up. I can tell you it's filling up. So we don't want you to be left out in the cold. Um, you know, we have a limited space. Uh, but but we can accommodate uh, more people. So uh, don't delay, though. That's what I'm suggesting to you. Don't delay. Uh, let's just see what the Lord has in mind for us. Let's just see what our Blessed Mother wants to show us and reveal to us. Let's just find out about Our Lady's heart and Our Lady's heart in union with our heart and what all that has to do with this moment in time and the triumph of her immaculate heart. Maybe you have some insights on that. I'd be very curious to hear them today. Let me give you that toll free number again. It's 833-288-EWTN. That's 833-288-3986. We're going to go to the phone lines in just a moment. But first I want to go to, um, uh, to Olivia. She uh, is on YouTube with us today, and she says, All my life I thought my problems were personal, but it's funny how many people have the same sorrows. Spiritual strength is a muscle. Well, you know, Olivia, I think that you've just landed upon a great truth. Spiritual strength is a muscle. Uh, you know, faith, faith becomes a muscle right? Uh, and just as we know that we have to work our muscles in a gym, you know, lifting weights uh, to make them strong and to help them to grow bigger and, and, and to increase their flexibility. The same is true with that spiritual muscle of faith. We have to, uh, we have to use it. And God gives us opportunities to use that spiritual muscle. And they come by way of the contradictions and reversals in life, where we have to have faith in God. And when we invest that faith in him, even though the circumstances look dire and we see that, you know, there, there are troubles and, and the water isn't smooth, you know, all of that, we know that God's with us in it. And when we choose to operate out of that reality, we begin to see that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus and that spiritual muscle of faith grows. And so does its companion trust. When we have faith in God, we trust in God. I would say that in a certain way, trust is a demonstration of faith. You know, it's a demonstration uh, of faith. But faith is an action word too. You know, uh, faith is an action word too. It's, it's moving in that faith and letting that faith move in us. So I think you've landed upon a great truth there. And yeah, your problems were personal, but many people have the same sorrows. There are some of those sorrows that are universal, you know, that, that we all experience. We all experience betrayal. We all experience a rejection. We all experience abandonment. Those are the three that are common to everybody. Uh, but we also experience others. We might experience the death of a child. We might experience the death of a parent. We might experience the death of a spouse. These are very real big crosses, but nonetheless, God is there and he's making provision for us in all of them. So thank you for sharing your insight with us today because it's a very good one and one that we all need to remember. 
uh, all that we uh, one that we all need to embrace. Renee M out there on YouTube says prayer request please for five month old Jackson suffering with COVID, high fever, rash, vomiting. Please, Mama, wrap your mantle around him and make him better. He was recently baptized and his family returned to church because of him. I know the evil one is angry. Well, I can guarantee you he's not happy, Renee. He's never happy uh, when there is a baptism. He's never happy when people return to the faith. There's no question about it. Now, we're going to pray for Jackson right now. Father God, we lift this little baby up to you. And you created this little baby. He is perfect in every way. Right now, Father God, this baby is a saint. He is a saint. Sanctifying grace is his. His soul is filled with it. He's full of grace. And so in this moment, we would ask that this grace would be efficacious in him. We know that there is nothing untoward that can stand up under this grace, Lord. And we're asking in a very special way that he would be completely healed of this COVID that he has, that the rash will go away, that he will stop vomiting. We pray against any kind of dehydration. We pray uh, against any kind of bacteria that would seek to lodge itself in him at this time when his immune system is deprived of all that it needs. We ask you, Father God, in this moment to just wrap Our Lady's mantle around him, that, that, that Our Lady would encompass this little man and that this little man would be in safe harbor in that refuge, which is Our Lady's Immaculate Heart. I ask, Father God, that the fullness of health would be restored to this baby very, very quickly. I pray that you bring uh, peace, the peace that surpasses understanding to mommy and daddy. Uh, I, I ask that their, their faith and their trust in you would be increased through this travail. Uh, but I pray and I ask, Lord God, that this travail would not last long for the sake of this little one whom you loved into life. Jackson. Father God, we offer this prayer to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the merits of his cross, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and with the maternal beatitude and intercession of our Blessed Lady. Amen. I just see this little one wrapped in that mantle of protection. I, 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 I see that not as a as a blanket, but I, I do see it as, as grace that is just weaving itself around him. Uh, so I think, Renee, uh, take, take peace, take joy in that. Let's uh, get out to the phone lines. We have Linda with us. Linda is in Texas. Uh, she's listening to us via Guadalupe Radio Network. Hi, Linda. Hi, Donette. Thank you for taking my call. Mm-hmm. Um, I have um, a grandson who is nine years old, and he has type 1 diabetes, but um, two and a half weeks ago, he was also diagnosed with brain and spine cancer. Oh, no. And um, he had two operations within 48 hours to remove one tumor in his brain and then one on his brain stem, but they could get 90% of that one. And then there's another one in his brain as well as down his spine. Um, they say he's probably had this for over two years. Um, and I have, I am praying for a miracle for him. Of course, that he'd be healed. He mm-hmm. starts radiation next Monday. Um, the radiologist yesterday that they went to that's going to be doing it told him that he had, most children survive this cancer, but his is so aggressive that he probably has less than a 50% chance. And he told that to my grandson, who's only nine. And my heart is breaking for him. Um, I've been... I, another problem, I, I'm feeling like I might be selfish in this, but I want so badly to see him and to hold him and to hug him. And I love him so much, and it's my son's son, but my son's wife does not like me, and she hasn't since they were married seven years ago and um, hasn't allowed me to a lot of the family activities, and I want so badly to go over there. He got to go home last Friday, but he's does start radiation on Monday. I am not allowed to go see him or hug him or and it's just tearing my heart out because I go to mass every day and I stay for the rosary and the chaplet and pray for a miracle for him. And I just feel so I feel I I'm hurt and I'm I feel left out but then I thank God, you know, it's not about me and my feelings. This is about my grandson who needs a miracle. And so I don't know what to do because I feel like I'm selfish for even thinking about how hurt I am because it doesn't matter. What really matters is that Levi gets healed. Well, Linda, 
first of all, you know, I just want to relieve you of one burden. It's not selfish to want to be with your grandchild. There's nothing selfish about that. That's that's the natural inclination of a grandparent to want to be with a grandchild, and especially in these circumstances, uh, the reality of your love for him is what's propelling you forward to desire to see him. That's not selfishness. Uh, yeah, of course you're hurt. Um, when we experience this kind of treatment, and we don't know what's caused it, and then there's this, uh, you know, real, very real pressing difficulty, trouble, uh, sickness, pervasive kind of a thing that's going on in a family uh, to allow whatever is the angst that your daughter-in-law might have to you be a barrier at a time like this is um, just a, a suffering of the heart. And to say that your feelings are hurt, of course your feelings are hurt, but your heart's hurt. Your heart is aching. Um, and yet, you know, let me just say this. Um, this aching of the heart that you're experiencing and this uh, betrayal uh, and this rejection. You know, I mentioned those three that are common to everyone at some point in time, betrayal, abandonment, rejection. You're experiencing them all at one time, and that's a tremendous load. But I can tell you this much. I can tell you that the most powerful prayer that you can pray, and I'm not suggesting you stop the rosary, nor am I suggesting you stop the chaplet, nor am I suggesting that you stop going to Mass and receiving communion for him. I'm not suggesting any of that. But the very, uh, the very uh, way in which our Lord prayed for us and the effective way in which he prayed for us, the most effective way in which he prayed for us was through his salvific act on the cross. And you are on the cross with Jesus right now. You are. And so the, the, the greatest prayer that you can offer is this suffering of the heart, this feeling of betrayal, rejection, abandonment, this, this, this ache that is there to see him, um, that is not being assuaged in any way through the natural means, um, this, this, this concern that you have for him, all of that, that is the stuff, that is the stuff that has such great power when you attach it to the sufferings of our Lord, when you offer it up in union with him. This is true intercession. This is true intercession. This is just not, you know, um, uh, you know, offering a petition. Oh, please, you know, we, uh, this, this is, this is, this is in a sense dying in a certain way for him. It is that, it is that, it is, it is, it is a, it is a sacrifice, an unbloody sacrifice uh, of, of, uh, uh, of, of great merit that can do so much for him in this time. And, you know, man proposes and God disposes. The doctor might say a less than 50% chance, but that might not be heaven's intention for this little boy. That might not be heaven's intention at all. We are realists. We know we're up against a battle. We know that this is a very serious diagnosis. We know that it could cost him his life. But we also know that our God is a God of omnipotence. He is a God of great strength, infinite strength, and there's nothing, nothing, nothing that is more powerful than he. Not this cancer, not the type 1 diabetes, none of it. Um, and so we dare to come before the throne of God, and we dare to ask for a complete healing for your little grandson. We dare to do that. Why? Because we have confident assurance in things that are hidden. We don't see it, but we know with God Nothing is impossible. And we stand on that truth and that reality. And so, Father God, we do lift this little fellow up to you right this very moment. You have created him in your image and likeness. You know this prognosis is serious. You know, Father God, that, that, that this disease is life-threatening. But it's not stronger than you. And we know that to be so. So I ask that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you would heal this little boy, that you would radiate this cancer right out of his body, Lord. Oh, yes, we'll use the means of man, but I'm talking about supernatural radiation that comes by way of your Holy Spirit. And so it is with confidence that we offer you this prayer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the merits of his cross, through the power of the Holy Spirit, with the maternal beatitude and intercession of Our Lady. And may your daughter's heart be at peace. We're going to be right back. Stay with us.
Cy Kellett, Joan Lewis, Colin Donovan. The leading Catholic voices are on the largest Catholic media network in the world. You're listening to the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. It's really awe-inspiring to know that Take Two with Jerry and Debbie has the impact that it does. We know from what our listeners share on the air, but also from corresponding with them outside of the show via email and social media. There's no better feeling than knowing you've helped someone, maybe many people at a time, work through various situations and more clearly see God's purpose and plan for their lives. Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. Today, noon Eastern on EWTN Radio. And now, the EWTN Family Prayer with Father Joseph. Family, a prayer that we pray together is a powerful prayer. So please pray together with me, our EWTN Family Prayer. Today we pray for peace in the world. Lord Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, we need you. The world is filled with strife and violence, and this fills us with fear. You told your disciples that peace was your gift to them. Give us your peace to bring us calm in the midst of the storm. Instill your gift of peace into the hearts of all men, that they may seek reconciliation and understanding. Quiet the sounds of war and hatred and raise up a chorus of harmony and peace. Amen. Who's your good shepherd? A priest who gives all he has for his flock. We're doing a part two about that later today on Take Two with Jerry and Debbie. On most of these EWTN stations. Now back to Women of Grace. The Women of Grace phone lines are open. 1-833-288-EWTN. 1-833-288-3986. Welcome back, everybody. We're so happy you were with us today, and we're inviting you to give us a call here. We are open for business. Yes, we are. <laughs> we enjoy receiving your calls. We enjoy praying with you and for you. Uh, we just prayed for two little guys, Jackson and a nine-year-old. His name I do not know. Uh, his grandma was just on the phone, um, diagnosed with a very serious cancer uh, and brain cancer and a sp- spinal cancer and he's type one diabetic, this little tyke. So I want you to remember them through the course of the day in your prayers. And I have been asking uh, for prayers uh, through the intercession of Blessed Solanus Casey. You know, <clears throat> he needs one miracle for canonization. Uh, he was a, a, a beautiful a Capuchin monk, I believe, there in Detroit, Michigan. As a matter of fact, you remember Father Benedict Rochelle. Father Benedict uh, was at that particular uh, monastery uh, during the lifetime of uh, Saint Sol- uh, Blessed Solanus Casey. And he recounted, actually, uh, that he uh, stole into the uh, chapel one evening to find uh, Solanus Casey in front of the tabernacle and playing his his violin for our Lord. I mean, you can just picture that scene. It's so touching. Uh, he gave to the Lord. It's like the little drummer boy in that, that Christmas carol. You know, he gave to the Lord what he had. And what he had was, you know, a not so good talent from what I understand, but nonetheless the ability to play the violin and he played that in front of our lord uh he was a a porter there uh he was a simplex priest meaning that he was not granted the privilege of hearing confession nor of preaching because he was not a very bright individual and they just didn't feel that, that, that that he could manage that but you know our lord uh he he used that to put uh solanus at the door he was a porter and literally thousands of people came to that door asking for prayers and intercession because his prayers were outrageously efficacious and healings occurred and marriages were saved and alcoholics were freed from their addiction. All kinds of things happened through his prayers. Uh, and, and it's just a, a very, very beautiful, beautiful uh, way in which God opened up to him a possibility that might never have existed if he had been given uh, the opportunity to preach. 
preach or if he had been given the opportunity to hear confession. And many people would come to him and they would confess their problems. And he would say, well, I cannot give you absolution, but you've told them to me. So you just go over there and father is waiting. And you just tell him that you've told me all your sins and you go in there and, and you receive absolution. So, you know, just, just a, a remarkable man of God. <clears throat> and so, because he was so, and many miracles happened while he was living. None of those, of course, count towards uh, beatification or towards uh, the uh, acclamation of the church that he is a saint. But he needs one miracle. So let's just ask for a miracle for, from Solanus Casey, right? And it might be this little boy. We prayed yesterday for uh, Ben, who I remembered in my rosary this morning again. Again, uh, Ben uh, ha was 12 brain tumors. Having those brain tumors, we were praying for complete and total healing for him. So at any rate, uh, you know, I invite you to do that. Now, Deanna Williston is out there. Deanna is asking if we've heard of Our Lady of the Grapes. <laughs> And no, I, I kind of thought that was a joke until I looked it up here. And and indeed, there is Our Lady of the Grapes. And, uh, you know, I never heard of this before, uh, but it is, um, uh, it, there's a church uh, that is in the Beaujolais region of France, and people make pilgrimages there all of the time. It sits on top of a large, lonely mountain in the Rhone region of France. It's a Gothic church, and it's uh, dedicated to uh, to our our Lady under the title of Our Lady of Grapes. Of course, there is a story there. Here's the story. Following three years of devastating harvest, mildew from 1850 through 1852, local viniculturists decided to seek divine intervention and erect a church on top of the most important appellations of the area. The cornerstone was lay laid in October 16th, 1854, in front of a crowd of several hundred, and it was inaugurated on September 8th, 1857. You know, that's the birthday that we celebrate. Of, uh, you know, we dedicate that day to Mary's uh, birthday. September 8th, it says, is the Roman. Roman Catholic feast day of the Nativity of Mary and is celebrated by some traditional winemakers across France who refer to the day as Our Lady of the Grape Harvest. Each year on this day in the Beaujolais region, winemakers of the region make a pilgrimage to the church atop Mount Bruley with their best grapes from the early harvest. A priest blesses the grapes and bunches are put into the hands of a statue of Mary wherein a feast takes place. Needless to say, the site offers tremendous views of the surrounding French countryside and is ideal for a picnic lunch with a nice bottle of wine, a perfect crusade for wine enthusiasts from all over and all beliefs. So there you go. Thank you, Deanna. I learned something today about Our Lady of the Grapes. That is very funny, but yet maybe not so much. I do remember the wedding feast at Cana. <laughs> so our Blessed Mother has had something to do <laughs> with wine for centuries, right? <laughs> for millennia. So there you go. Uh, you can go out there and read all about it. Just do a search on it and you'll be able to get more information. A33288 EWTN is the way that you can join us today. That's A33288 3986. That's the way that you can give us a call here. It's toll free, as I mentioned to you. Uh, let us know if you're a first time caller. Tell Matt that, and I will ring the bell. If you want to get your uh, question or comment up uh, through social media, get out there to EWTN Radio's YouTube channel and Facebook page and use the chat feature there. We'll be only too happy to receive it, and we will address it. We've got Anne with us. She is in Colony, New York today. She is listening to us via podcast at Bonham Radio. Hi, how are you? Yes, Anne, are good you good morning? Good morning. You might I want am. to turn your you might want to turn your radio down because we can hear it and it's going to confuse you because the uh, my oh, voice I is going to come to you. I have my Oh I don't no. Think it's, can you hear me okay now? I do. Uh, good, I hear good. you just fine. Okay, go ahead. Oh good. Well, uh, a couple of things um but uh the the women who uh, bearing the sorrow of not seeing her grandchild, I understand, and I know that there is no suffering that is not rewarded, and her suffering will be. I have cancer, and uh, mine, uh, I, I had a similar situation that went on for many years, and our family has been what I consider reunited as a result of, of that. And so at, at, in his time, it, all healing takes place. Oh, uh, but uh, there is a missing woman. Uh, her name is Megan Mahan. I may be mispronouncing the last name. Uh, and she's a young school teacher uh, who's been missing from the Lee, Massachusetts area since March 11th. Um, and a uh, very mysterious disappearance. 
and uh, it reminded me of how the blessed Mar- how the blessed mother uh, interceded uh, for us, my sister and I, when we were I was only eighteen and my sister was about twenty four, and uh, I I truly pray for for this intercession, and I will take a rosary to the same shrine. Uh, there's a small shrine uh, between uh, Albany and Schenectady to our Blessed Mother. And uh, that particular night, all these years ago, I brought, I asked my sister uh, to, if we could go up to the shrine to bring a rosary to Our Lady. And it was a Sunday night, and we did. And we went up and we put the, we put, uh, a rosary um, uh, at the shrine in her hand, and it was get, it was getting dark, and my sister was tired, and she said, "I I really need a cup of coffee." There's a there's a, a coffee shop in the hotel in Pittsfield, so we can sit, we continued to uh, Pittsfield, and that shop was closed. So we went. We, the only place that was open, we knew was very sketchy. We could just tell when we went in. But we went in, nevertheless, and had coffee. And when we were leaving, uh, there was a, a car pulling out behind us, um, mm. and it had uh, and and it had its lights off. But it followed us out, and there is absolutely nothing, nothing, in those days, between Pittsfield and Albany, uh, a couple of um, of bars, but. Nothing between where, where the, the distance I'm talking about. And for several miles, they chased us down this terrible road, uh, which was full of curves and, uh, and there was just guide rails that protected you from going over the side. And it was horrible, horrible chase. My sister was driving a boyfriend's car, which happened to be a good, heavy uh, a Lincoln, as I recall, and uh, held the road well. And she was driving way beyond either, you know, her capabilities, quite honestly, to try to avoid these men. And they kept trying to pull alongside of us, and finally mm. they did, and they forced us over. Oh. And when they fought, forced us over, there was a, 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 just a, a, a dirt lane ahead, and I, I screamed and said, stop, don't go. And so she stopped the car, and two men jumped out with tire irons. Oh, and, dear. Well, the one, uh, the one had a tire iron. The other one, I never saw what he had in his hand. But one had a tire iron and started running toward the car. And uh, quite honestly, I wasn't as charitable uh, then as I am today. But I said, run him over. Uh, I was so frightened. I was terribly frightened. We were terribly frightened for our lives. And she had the presence of mind. Again, Mary's intercession. She backed the car up. She went around them. And they jumped in the car and proceeded to chase us again, and and so on. And they were nearly on our nearly on our bumper all the time. And we had remembered coming up uh, that just before you get to the shrine, there was a small building that was used as a uh, a, a place for the, like uh, where the troopers would stay overnight when they mm-hmm. had a shift there. And so we were looking for that, and we knew that it was right past the shrine. And fortunately, we, it had a circular driveway. We missed the first entrance, but we found we, we were able to pull the car in on the second entrance. And um, the state trooper was, of course, very, he tried to calm us down. And he led us all the way to the Albany County border where the, where the um, um, uh, county sheriff's picked us up and, and actually followed us all the way home. And we went into into these parking lots along the way, uh, then looking for the car, and of course it wasn't there. But the trooper told us that there were, there were missing women and people, um, and that the roads at that time through that wooded area were known by the locals, and, uh, and they just, dis- people just disappeared. Oh so I goodness. know that our lives were safe. We will go back. Um, I am bringing a rosary to that shrine, and anyone who has who knows that shrine and where where it is, uh, it's in Lebanon, uh, which I think is still on the new. It's either uh, it's in the new it's in New York State, 
uh, just before the uh, the Massachusetts border, uh, and the the grotto is on the left, and the shrine uh, of uh, Our Lady statue is on the right. And anyone who would think to pray for Megan Mahan and her family is so uh, I don't know them, but I know they're in terrible pain. Yes. So that's my reason for my call. Well, Anne, I, you know, I, I what a, what a compelling story you tell us here and praise be to God for his mercy and for his kindness in delivering you and your sister safely uh, to that sheriff's uh, outpost there and then on so that you had that that um, that uh, escort all of the way home. I can't even imagine the trauma that that caused you and what a gracious action you are encouraging people to take today on behalf of, of Megan. So just a couple of things here. First of all, I, I, you know, I just feel like after hearing a story like this, we need to pray. So I want to pray uh, with you and I want to pray for all of those listening today. And I want to thank uh, our Lord God for all of the ways in which he meets our every need. And so, Father God, you know, first of all, I just thank you for the safety <clears throat> that you provided for Anne and her sister all those many years ago. And I thank you that she's being able to give witness to that. Because when we are in dire circumstances, you never leave us alone. And even if it should cost us our life, Father God, we know that in that moment when life is being taken from us, we are not alone. You are there. Heaven is there. We know that heaven is there. We know <clears throat> that all of the heavenly grace pours down upon us in that passage is one that 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 is paved with honey and roses by our blessed lady. Father God, I want to pray for Anne's health here. She tells us that she is battling cancer. Uh, Father God, I just ask once again that the profound, the profound radiating light, healing light of the Holy Spirit uh, would would um, uh, enter into her body uh, would eradicate all cancer, Lord, that she would be made completely well in you and through you, that she might continue to give testimony uh, to you and your marvelous deeds. I pray for a complete and total, heal total healing for her. Father God, we pray for the safety of Megan now. We do not know where she is, Father. Uh, time is, 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 is wearing on. This is since March the 11th. Uh, we don't know if she's alive or dead, but this is what we do know, Lord. We do know that she's not been abandoned by you. And so, Father God, we would ask for the safe return of Megan uh, and, and ultimately the safe return of Megan to your heavenly kingdom as we pray for each one of us and as we pray for each other because that is the ultimate glory of life, entering into life on high in Christ Jesus. Father God, any trauma that might be clinging to Anne or to her sister, any kind of, of misgiving of heart that they might not even be aware of, any way in which the enemy would like to use that experience to uh, tie them up in some way instead of them being completely free uh, in, in all areas, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, physically, uh, in all of those ways, Father God, I'm asking for uh, the, the, the redemptive grace won by your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to flow into all of those areas now and to release them, to release them, Lord. I do see a chain uh, that, is being, that is being cut uh, right at this moment, and I don't know if it's for you, Anne. I don't know if it's for your sister, but it might even be something that, that you're totally unaware of until you begin to, you or your sister begins to sense a new freedom, a new interior freedom. Father God, we we thank you for that. Uh, and we pray for, for those men that try to attack <clears throat> them. Um, and if they are responsible for the deaths of, of these other women, Father God, if they have not yet died, we're asking for complete and total repentance and conversion of heart uh, for them before they meet you face to face. We offer this prayer to you, Father, in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the merits of his cross, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and with the maternal beatitude and intercession of our Blessed Lady. Amen. And I, I thank you so very much for sharing your story uh, with us. It's one I think that's going to stay with us for a long time and become a source of inspiration and a source of trust and faith in God. Thank you, Anne. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your show. I appreciate all, all that you do. And thank well, you. Well, God bless you, Anne. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now. Be at peace. My goodness, that's a story, isn't it? Oh, gee whiz, you know? And, and how many times has God... You know, Anne got to see how God protected her through the intercession of our Blessed Lady. How many times have we been saved that we don't even know about? You know, have you ever thought about that? How many times have we been saved that we don't even know about? How many times 
have we been plucked by the ear out of the fire and we don't even know about it. We have so much to thank God for and so much to be grateful for. Let's go to Noelle. She's driving through Pennsylvania this morning, listening to us via Sirius XM 130. Hey, Noelle. Good morning. Well, it's afternoon maybe where you're at. I don't know. <laughs> I just <laughs> well, no, it's comment. morning here. <laughs> it is. Um, I just wanted to come. I'm coming down to see my grandchildren. I was listening to this, the, uh, the dear woman that called in who could not have contact with her grandson who's suffering so severely um and you mentioned blessed Solomon, casey just briefly i'm a deacon in the church recently ordained oh we congratulations and thank you and, for your vocation well thank god for that that i could hear him um <laughs> we were talking about it because one of the deacons in our diocese very strongly resembles uh Solomon, casey really and we we got talking about it, and we looked him up. Obviously, Doug did a little research on him, and I, I just think it's I just what we call where we're at God incidences. It's not a coincidence that you mentioned him today and asked to pray through his intercession for this young boy. Um, and it's just an, I wanted to take a quick second to say, whoever heard that, pray, pray, pray. I know they will, but even more so, just for the fact that. A few people probably have heard of Blessed Sound as Casey, and you're mentioning him within 48 hours of us having a, a hour-long discussion about the individual and, and, and the work he has done for the Lord. Um, it's just to encourage other people to do that. The saints are there for us. The smoke of their prayers, as Revelation says, rises before the Lord 24-7. And the more we do that and the more we find their help, uh, the better off we're all going to be. Mm. Well, you know, no. So I just wanted to share that and, and tell you thank you for your mission on the radio. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Deacon. And, you know, I, I don't believe in coincidences either. I believe in God incidences. Nope. And I yep. just have a feeling, you know, because he's he, he's come up. I, I did a program yesterday with Michael O'Neill. He's written a book called uh, They Might Be Saints, and he featured him in there. But years ago, I had the postulators for his cause on my radio program uh, before I even started to do television. And that was all the way back, like in 1988. I was on radio in 87, television 87. I had them on the programs that I did here at EWTN at that time. So he's been he's been somebody, you know, that's been in my heart, but I've not really acted upon anything. But, you know, I read I read his story in this book the other day, preparing for the show. And I just felt this overwhelming, you know how you get those little, you know, when the Holy Spirit's showing up, you know what I'm saying? And yep. The Holy Spirit showed up and, you know, I just, I just said, wow, this is, what is this all about? And then yesterday we had an opportunity to pray for a man uh, who has 12 tumors in his brain. He's deaf from, from them. They're, they're benign, but, but, you know, they, they continue to, uh, to, to uh, multiply and he was going in for surgery. So we prayed to Solanus and, you know, I just feel like maybe that's a little mission the Lord's entrusting. So I am so glad you called because I think it's confirmation for that. And I think maybe it's a word that the Lord wants to get out. Okay, look, it's his time now. Let's pray for that miracle, right? Uh, so right. there you have it. And, and we know, and I just want to say just for clarity, when you, when you're praying for a miraculous healing, uh, it has to be miraculous. Uh, you know, medical science has to agree that this is an impossible situation and, and it was miraculously resolved. So there's that, but, but you only pray to that saint. You don't ask for anybody else's intercession. You only ask for that saint's intercession. So, there you go. Deacon, thank you. You've made me really, really happy today. <laughs> thank you. Well, you made my day, let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> We're all God? in this together. <laughs> we are. We certainly right. are. Well, God bless you. God bless you and drive carefully. <laughs> God bless. Thank Bye-bye you. now. Thank you. So, you know, like you know, this, this just tickles me pink, <laughs> you know, and we say, well, how is it, you know, that, that God works? This is how he works. Here's an example of it, you know, live and in person and on the air. This is, this is how he works. He pulls his people together for the causes he wishes to affect. Don't ever forget that. He pulls his people together for the causes he wishes to affect, right? So that's why we come together on Catholic Radio. That's why we open up the phone lines. That's why we pray. Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> we share the good news. We revel in the good news. <laughs> you know, we enter into the good news. We become the good news. Oh, yes. <laughs> Well, listen, I'm going to be back with you again tomorrow, and I'm inviting you to have a blessed day in the Lord until we have the opportunity to spend those moments together tomorrow. Please pray for me. I'm praying for you. I pray for you every day. So God bless you now. Bye-bye. Beyond Damascus with Dan Denete and Aaron